building houses, not knocking them down. Good morning. It's the AM show. You're on three. Magic talking online. We are 24 minutes past seven. Let's get you up to speed with what's happened so far this morning. Auckland. Well done, Auckland. You've rejoined New Zealand and the New Zealand at COVID-19 alert level one. So we're all there. And we've had no new community cases overnight. That is the update from the minister, uh, Chris Hipkins. Oamadu, 27 degrees. Good morning to you. And how can you stay strong and keep on keeping on during the roller coaster ride of this pandemic? The Mental Health Foundation will speak out. They're allowed to. They'll bring us their advice at 7.40. It's the AM show. OK, it's hard to believe things could get worse for the country's housing crisis, but that's the word from the New Zealand Initiative, which has come up with a, a fantastic new but alarming report that says, well, for the next 20 years, we may need to build as many as 35,000 houses per year uh, to keep up. We've only been building, what, 21,000 per year since 1992. Joining us now is New Zealand Initiative report author uh, Leonard Hong. Leonard, good day, mate. Nice to have you on the yeah, programme. Good morning. Good morning. Another great report we can put with all the other thousands of reports. What's different about your one? Well, uh, we've had the housing crisis for like a number of years, right? And my point of the report is to say that, look, in the long run, this is bound to get worse. This is just the tip of the iceberg because population ageing is going to increase housing demand uh, than more than we thought. But aren't we making progress? I mean, there's been the unitary plan in Auckland, which when I look at my street, there used to be one house over there, now there's three. There used to be one house over there, now there's a mini tower. I mean, we are building more houses where there used to be one, there's now more. Yeah, well, Stats New Zealand did say that this is a peak that we haven't seen um, since the 1970s, right? But the problem is that in proportion to population, um, we have 5.1 million people now. Back then, we had 3 million people. Hmm. Um, but, but, but we have, we've, what have we built? 39,000 houses, 37,000 houses in the year before? That, we've got the numbers now. Yeah, yeah, the numbers are going up, which is a good sign. But like I said, if you look at the, the dwellings per thousand, according to Stats New Zealand, that index was 13.2 in the 1970s. Mm. And that's only 7.6. We're only half of that. Okay, so is that because we've got what, a, a big immigration or is it because uh, domestically we've got more population? What is it? No, it's a bit of both. It's, it's both population growth and also population aging. So to make it easier for the listeners, um, I'll just give you an example. Right. Let's say there's a nuclear family in the 1970s with five people, right? The parent, the mom, uh, the mom, the dad, the three kids, right? What happens 30 years down the line? The three kids move out. They start their own, you know, they have their own partners. They have children, obviously with a lower fertility rate. So that one household in mm. the 1970s by 2000 is turned to four houses, right? Like the four I don't think this has been taken into account by this government or even the previous one. No, no, they're not. So it's a multiplying effect. Yeah, it is a multiplying effect, right? So that example aggregated out to the whole country. Oh, we're in, we're in the stook. Yeah. We're in the stook. What, what, what's the one thing you do, Leonard? What's the one thing? If you could have a silver bullet today, you could do one thing to solve the housing crisis. Not that it would, but what would the one thing to be? I, th I think the housing market is really complicated for ordinary people to understand normally as well. I mean, I mean there's no silver bullet. There's so many factors. One it? thing. Uh, well... Look, my paper is to highlight the fact that we're severely underestimating the supply and whatever it takes, build, like build more supply because you know, the current government's been tinkering around with demand, you know, LVR, uh, capital gains. You do nothing. Yeah, that won't do anything. There are two things that we should be focusing on. One is how can we build more dwellings? And second, how can we incentivize how can we build more dwellings? Allow, uh, I don't know. Uh, the don't and, know. Well, no, I do know. Well, I do know, but... One thing the initiative we've been pushing for the last nine years is to say, look, give the GST rebates to council. Give them the incentives to want to build. Because at the moment, you know, look, by the way, Duncan, housing and local government uh, structures are connected. You know, if we solve the, if we solve the, the you could say the, if, if, tr if councils, if central, if the central government and the developers have more trust, like Germany, mm. we can have a far more affordable housing yeah, market. They don't trust each other and we're all individual silos. Nice to see you, Mr. Hong. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And your report, New Zealand Initiative report author, Leonard Hong. It's 27 past seven. It's